my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. For today's video, I have yet another thrift flip for you. Pulled a few more items out of my stash in my kitchen and made them over and got them ready for you for today. Uh, I love how all of them turned out. One of them kind of kicked my keister just a little bit and you'll see more in the video uh, as to which one it was. But I hope you like them and I hope you enjoy the video. And without further ado, let's get to today's projects. For my first project, I have this little metal bowl that has been sitting under my craft table in my kitchen and I kept kicking it. And so I decided I really needed to get it finished and out. So I am putting it in today's video. I decided to go ahead and start with a coat of uh, spray paint on this. I'm just using a Rust-Oleum matte or satin uh, spray paint in I think the color is called espresso and giving this a good coat of the paint. This will not only help my DIY paint stick to the piece, but it also gives me a nice color to distress back to. Then it's on to painting my piece, and for this one, I picked DIY's crinoline. I love the contrast between crinoline and this dark brown. I think it's just really pretty. Uh, it's a very elegant look, and all of these neutrals will really help play into my spring displays, uh, and those are what I'm kind of working towards getting built, so that is why I'm using some of these more uh, muted tones like the crinoline and the faded burlap and uh, those kind of colors. I went over the entire piece with two coats of crinoline and then I went over a few spots where you could still just see the brown peeking through with a third coat. Then it was time for distressing and I'm just using the wet distress method with a damp shop towel going over all of those raised areas really well and bringing back some of that beautiful brown from underneath the white. Then it's time to seal my paint, and for this I chose Big Top. I know Big Top leaves a little bit of a sheen, but it's definitely a durable sealer, and I figured if somebody wants to put things in this, it'd be nice if it had a very durable finish to it. So one coat of Big Top all over, front, back, sides, bottom, and then this little piece is done. Project two are these three silver plated pieces that I've had in my stash for a while. Now it took me a second to decide I wanted to go ahead and paint these. I did my due diligence to make sure they weren't worth anything. None of them are solid silver. And so I decided to go ahead with my plan and make these pretty so that they could go into my spring uh, displays. Again, for these, I'm using DIY's crinoline. It's such a beautiful neutral for just about any kind of finish, and that is exactly what I was going for with these pieces. I gave the fronts of each of these two good even coats of DIY's crinoline paint, kind of brushing them to make sure all of the brush strokes went in the same direction. I really am not a huge fan of brush strokes, so I was trying to be really careful to not leave too many on these pieces. And and once I was done with that and the paint was completely dry, I moved on to distressing. I absolutely love the look of distressed silver, but I understand if you don't like distressing, you could completely skip this step. For me, I think the distressing is what really makes these pieces and makes those uh, details really stand out. And I just love the look of the silver shining through the paint. Once that was done and my paint was dry again, I flipped them all over and cleaned up the back sides. I just wanted to make sure there weren't any uh, places where the paint had leached over onto the backs. I am going to be adding hangers to these so they can be hung on a wall. My hangers are just stuck at home right now and I keep forgetting to bring them into the shop. Once I was done with that, it was on to decorating my trays and 
for the first one, I grabbed a leftover piece of uh, the wallpaper decoupage paper by Recycled. This is probably one of my absolute favorite decoupage papers. I absolutely love it. And I just put it down into the oval and then used my fingernail to score it all the way around uh, the oval and then flipped it over, cut that out. I laid it in there just to make sure it fit really well. And then it was on to decoupaging it down. I'm just using liquid patina for this laying on a nice even coat of the liquid patina and then carefully placing that paper back down into the bottom of the tray and then uh, going over the top of it with another coat of liquid patina. I just work my way from the top to the bottom uh, going over each section with another coat of the patina until I am completely finished and the entire piece has been laid down and covered with that coat of patina. Then it was onto the little bowl. I was going to try and put some of that paper down in there, but with the round surface, it was kind of difficult. So I chose to just use this piece of a transfer set by Redesign called French Labels that I still had some pieces of. And I just laid that down in the bottom of the bowl and I actually applied it using my fingernails. And then I moved on to the last tray. For this one, I'm using up another piece of the uh, set that I have that I've been using pieces of called Wild Amorous, which is a beautiful set with some pinks and purples and yellows, just lots of really pretty spring kind of colors. Uh, and I picked this uh, design that I thought matched the base of this really well. And so I laid part of it down, um, held that part down and then peeled the breast of the backing off so that I could make sure that the entire transfer went down exactly where I needed it to. And once I had it laid down, I kind of pressed all the little pieces into place uh, because it is a curved surface. It made it a little bit more difficult uh, to apply the transfer. Uh, but then once it was all down, I rubbed it with the transfer stick and just peeled that piece of vellum back slowly as I went and applied that transfer to the bottom of this tray. Once that was done and I had it burnished in, I went ahead and added a little butterfly. I thought the end needed a little something. Uh, and once that was done, it is time to seal my trays. And for that, again, I'm using DIY's Big Top. I just felt like this was a good sealer for the metal and the paint. I didn't want to dull that metal at all as I was going over it with any kind of sealant. Uh, so Big Top it was. And I love Big Top anyway. I know it leaves a little bit of a sheen, but for these I absolutely don't mind at all. So I went over each piece with one coat of Big Top and all that's left is to put the hangers on the back of these and then they'll be finished. My third and final project for today is this sign that I've had kicking around in my kitchen for a while and I knew I needed to sand down the letters because they were raised up above everything else. The only problem was is it was pouring down rain outside and so I couldn't take it out and use my uh, little palm sander so instead I had to go at this by hand and these were pretty thick honestly. I did go outside and between rainstorms and I uh, gave this a good even coat of that Rust-Oleum spray in the dark brown and then brought it back in and you could still see the letters poking through the paint. So again, I went over it with more sandpaper. Uh, the problem is I think I actually went down into a crackle coat that was underneath the paint and it gave me a run for my money for sure. I didn't know at that point that I was going to be having issues, so I was on to painting the frame of this, being careful not to paint the interior as much as possible, and I am using faded burlap for this frame. I'm giving it two coats of faded burlap all the way around, trying to be careful to not get too much paint on that center portion. Once that was done, I painted my center with DIY's crinoline, getting ready to apply some decoupage paper. This is where things kind of went awry. I 
uh, had a heck of a time with the crinoline because it kept crackling part parts of it and you'll see coming up here shortly uh, actually completely sloughed off and once I had gotten it shellacked and then repainted you could see the dent in the paint so then I had to sand it and repaint it again so as you can imagine between painting and dry times this took me way longer than I thought it was going to. I finally, finally got the crinoline seated well, shellacked underneath, and then another coat over it, sanded smooth and beautiful, and then it was on to finishing the frame. Uh, for this, I did want some distressing. I wanted to see some of that brown that I had put underneath, so I went around with some sandpaper and did a little bit of distressing with that. Then it was onto my decoupage paper, and again, I'm trying to use up the chunks of this wallpaper uh, decoupage paper by Roy Cycled, so I grabbed another piece of that. I gave it a little bit of a spritz with some water and then began to decoupage it into the center of this piece. Now again here you guys my advice would be make sure if your uh, decoupage paper has words or anything that uh, makes it apparent that one side is the top and the other side is the bottom make darn sure that you you check and see where the hanger is on your piece before you lay your decoupage paper down. You're going to see me put the decoupage paper on the first time but you're not going to see me peel it back up and change it to a different position and put it down for a second time. Uh, unfortunately for me, I didn't pay attention to where my hanger was. Anyway, I started at the top with that starter strip of the uh, liquid patina, put that down, carefully laid my paper down, and then just worked my paper down with the liquid patina section by section to the end of the frame. Luckily, Roy Cycled's paper is pretty darn thick and durable, so I was able to peel this piece up, switch it around, and lay it back down with only a little tear. Then it was finally on to the fun part of this project. I have these keys that were given to me by a friend. I have a ton of them and they're all bright, bright silver and I wanted this one to be darker so I went ahead and painted it with some uh, spray paint by Rust-Oleum. And then I moved on to creating a stencil that says, you hold the key. I laid this down on some flour sack cloth that I have that I stained with coffee some time ago and peeled back my transfer tape and then began stenciling that in. I'm using layered chocolate for the stencil color. I love the contrast here and the layered chocolate matches really well with the uh, spray paint that I used as a base layer on the frame. Once I had it stenciled in, I had to go over it a couple times, just being really careful to only use a little bit of, of paint at a time. I'm using a makeup sponge to apply it, just being patient and going slow. Then I removed my uh, stencil vinyl and weeded out all the little pieces. And you can see this actually gave me a nice crisp image on that flower sack cloth. Then I cut out the piece that I needed, frayed the edges just a little bit so that each side matched. Now before I could start putting my pieces all together, I needed to seal my frame. I started with a coat of DIY's clear wax, just applying that with my big brush and then wiping back the excess with a shop towel. I did go over the decoupage paper as well. I wanted to make sure that it had a nice protective coat of the clear wax uh, so that I could go back over that with some dark wax. Once the clear wax was on and I'd wipe back my excess, I did go over the decoupage paper with some dark wax. Now, since this has sealer on it already, uh, the dark wax isn't gonna make a huge impact, just enough to give it a little bit of an aged feel. Then I went around the edges with a little bit of thicker wax and just kind of dab, dab, dab that down with my uh, paintbrush. And then I went back around with a shop towel and just kind of blotted up a little bit of that dark wax, leaving some around the edge and in the corners to give this piece more of a vintage feel. Then I went over the rest of the frame with a dark wax using thicker wax down into the grooves and then wiping that back and then thinning out a little bit of wax for the bulk of the frame. Uh, it just makes it move a little easier and uh, is a little bit easier to wipe back. 
Once I was finished with that, it was time to start putting my piece together. I needed to seal the chocolate, layered chocolate paint on the stencil, and I just used a little bit of a matte spray by Rust-Oleum for that. Then I decided, you know, because I always have to add more difficulty levels to myself, that the flower sack cloth wasn't dark enough. So I grabbed some water and some dark and decrepit patina and just dabbed a little bit of dark and decrepit on a paper towel and used a little bit of water to thin it out and then just kind of went around the edges and added a little bit of that uh, liquid to this flower sack cloth to darken it up. Then it was time to adhere my key to the piece. I'm using a piece of copper thread that I have. It was a almost perfect match to the color that I'd used on the key. And I'm creating a long ribbon using strips of flower sack cloth that I just tore off. I think I used five strips of flower sack cloth and then two strips of lace that I bought at, I believe Hobby Lobby uh, some time ago. So just add those to the top, make sure everything's lined up really well. And then I used a little uh, piece of twine to tie those all together. Once that was done, I had my ribbon and I was going to place that underneath my key. Now this key is pretty darn heavy. And so what I decided is in the corner, I was going to use a screw uh, to attach the ribbon to the frame. So I kind of flipped up a couple layers of the ribbon and then put that screw into the corner and then flipped that ribbon back over it and you can't even see that the screw is there. And then I used a little bit of hot glue to make sure that the ribbon and the uh, key all stayed at the angle that I wanted them to. Once that was done, I sprayed the back of my little stencil with some uh, spray adhesive, laid that down onto my frame very carefully and then went around the corners and added a little bit of bling. These are beads that I found in the jewelry section at Hobby Lobby a while ago, and I love the little sparkle that it gives to this piece. here for today you guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up I so appreciate that uh, and if you haven't already I would love it if you think about subscribing to my channel and then just hit that little notification bell so you don't miss anything uh, and also don't forget to comment below and let me know which of the projects in today's video your favorite was I think for me it's probably the three little silver trays even though I was very nervous about painting the silver I think they turned out so cute I can't wait to get hangers on them and actually hang them on the wall. I think they're gonna be really, really pretty as a wall accent. Uh, and for, let's see, Friday's video, I already have a few items kind of pulled out of my stash and I will be working to get those finished for Friday's video. Uh, just a reminder too, all of the products you saw me use in today's video can be purchased through me at my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. So if you need paint or big top or any of those good things, just check that out there. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and I thank you so so much for being here and I will see you on Friday. Bye.